Hello and welcome to Treasury Notes, a financial education program from the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Financial literacy is important for all ages. Here in West Virginia, several organizations have made this topic a big priority. The West Virginia State Treasurer's Office has also taken the lead with programs like Get a Life, which is a budget simulation for middle school students. West Virginia University's Center for Financial Literacy and Education is also paving the way for increased financial literacy. The center was created in 2015 to help promote financial responsibility throughout the state. It's under the direction of WVU's John Chambers College of Business and Economics. Joining me today to talk more about the center and its mission is Director Amy Pridemore. Professor Pridemore, thank you so much for being here yeah, today. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me. It's always such a joy to talk with you. This is such a favorite topic of mine when we talk about financial education, financial literacy, some people call it, but really we're talking about making sure people all ages understand the importance of budgeting and the financial landscape within their own home. Um, for those who may not know, can you tell us a little bit more about your center and why it was created? Sure. So the center, as you say it, said, is housed within the John Chambers College of Business and Economics um, up at West Virginia University. And we actually provide education, outreach, and resources for constituents of all ages across the state of West Virginia and, you know, even the region. We have people, um, teachers from Kentucky and different states who come and are interested in our uh, curriculum and resources as well. So what we do is we serve as a resource for the constituents of the state, um, whether that is providing seminars, whether that is providing training opportunities, whether that is going out and um, providing curriculum resources to teachers, uh, you know, obviously the West Virginia University student population, faculty and staff. Um, we're doing some small business uh, training financial sessions with those individuals. So we have a, a wide variety of individuals that we touch through the center. So this isn't really just about educating students at WVU. No. It's much, much more widespread than that and I think that's important to note because WVU has routinely been a leader in our state for initiatives like this that are a little bit further reaching than just the student body. Absolutely. With us being a land-grant institution, it really, our mission is really to help the individuals of the state of West Virginia. So our center is technically considered an outreach center. Again, we're not just focused on the students, uh, the student population at WVU or the faculty and staff. We are focused at the community on the community at large and how we can help all of those individuals, no matter what their socioeconomic background is or where they came from. Um, we're here to help them the best way that we can. So that really speaks to your mission. Absolutely. So how does the center work with the College of Business and Economics? How does that relationship work? Um, so actually, we are completely uh, out, outside funded. Uh, we get all of our money from donors and uh, corporations to fund the center. But the uh, college actually provides a lot of the marketing resources for us. They provide us um, a lot of the, the platform, per se, to be able to go out and say, hey, I'm here from WVU. Um, you know, we're, we're backed by the the institution and we are a really credible source uh, to be able to provide this. Not only that, but then we also have the research side of it that we have quite a few of our faculty who are doing research as it relates to financial literacy and we can piggyback on some of the things that they're doing to help our mission as well. So let's talk about the mission. Let's talk about some of the goals. Yeah. What are some of your goals at the center? Absolutely. So I've been in my position a little over a year and um, you know, if you would have, we talked actually this time last <laughs> right. year. Uh, so things have quite, have changed quite a bit as far as where I see the center going. Um, it's really expanding. We really want to start a peer mentoring program at WVU for students. Uh, we think we, research has shown that they're much more likely to talk to another student versus talking to another adult. Um, so we got a grant that we're going to be able to start that peer mentoring program hopefully here in the fall. Um, we're expanding this again, like I said, to some small business owners. You know, when they're looking to go get a small business loan and they look at their credit score and they realize that they can't get a loan, they don't understand understand why, you know, well, how does my credit score impact what I want to do with my business? Why are those related? Um, so we're going to start getting into that landscape a little bit. Um, we're doing some things with a local recovery house there in town. So again, really expanding our reach, not just within WVU and some of the constituent groups that we've stayed with in the past. This is just so important, so um, vital for our community and our community members. I mean, you talk about small businesses, uh, you know, I think of that daunting task when you're um, trying to start a business, it's it's 
hard to think through everything you need to and to be able to have a resource Absolutely. to go to and a resource backed by the school I think is probably oh, really great. for sure. And the best thing about it is that we have this ecosystem. You know, we have Vantage Ventures, we have an entrepreneurial inter ecosystem within the university. So we all kind of work together um, that we have. I, I'm not a person who can sit down and do a business plan. My mind doesn't really think that way, but I can handle all of your finances uh, and I can uh, help you understand how to do those a little bit better. So we all work as a team to get uh, these small businesses created and started um, through West Virginia and give them all of the resources that we possibly can. Okay. And, uh, you know, we talked about it so much wider than the student body, but I will say you do great work with your students as well. Talk a little bit about that. So we have a WVU 191 class, which is a freshman orientation class, um, and we have integrated financial literacy curriculum into those classes. So uh, this year we're going to be in integrating foolproof curriculum. Um, they have a triage assessment, which is basically, for lack of better words, it's a quiz um, for these students to take and see where they fall, where their financial literacy skills fall, whether they're an at-risk student, maybe for dropping out because they don't have the resources to necessarily be at WVU. And then this triage assessment will actually target uh, different modules that they need to take to help increase their knowledge in whatever that area is, whether it's budgeting or credit or maybe student loans. Um, and then we're able to help those students um, maybe catch them before they become really stuck and they're, they have to drop out of the university. Um, so it, I'm really excited about that targeted approach that everybody's, um, based on their different skill sets, they'll be able to have different modules as it relates to finances and their money management. That's great. Now the Center for uh, Financial Literacy and Education is really divided into four pillars. That's how it was created. Can you talk a little bit sure, about that? Sure, absolutely. So our four pillars are investing, insurance, banking, and personal finance. Um, actually, we when you look at our finance department as a whole, it kind of uh, encapsulates all of those, um, but the banking and insurance really are more focused about bringing industry professionals and our student population together. So uh, actually last week we just had our insurance symposium where we had you know, roughly 50 professionals from the insurance industry that came. We had a panel discussion talking about um, what the industry, the insurance industry looks like right now. We had standing room only for students to come in and then they had a networking career fair so that they could make connections with one another. We do the same format for the banking summit. Um, we're looking at succession planning about banking here in West Virginia and what do we do when these small banks in local communities close and how do we continue that relationship? How do we um, get communities to trust their bankers? That sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, with the financial planning program, I run the center or the certified financial planning uh, program at WVU. So that's going to educate our students to go out and be financial planners um, and hopefully take that exam upon graduation. And then we also have the investment pillar, um, which is our student managed investment fund. We took a group of students to New York City a few weeks ago um, to show them what it looks like to live up there. Uh, it's <laughs> always a really interesting experience. <laughs> it's always really fun. Um, but those are how the four pillars kind of pull in all the aspects of money management and financial literacy um, and how we integrate those with our students at WVU. And you're really giving them a snapshot of what it looks like to go into different types Absolutely. of professions. I mean, um, a lot of students may think accounting or they business but the nuances of these professions there's oh. so many different roles in a bank or in an accounting firm Absolutely. or in any type of business that it's really it's really great that you do that um, when we talk uh, really taking a step back again and we talk about financial literacy as a whole there is a need for this type of work. I mean, again, we're not just talking about the students and a career path, but just when it, we get down to the at-home dinner table, being able to budget monthly, being able to understand what um, insurance you need, how you need to plan for the future, whether that be through um, investments, 401k, those types of things. There's a sh there's big need for this work. Absolutely. Talk to, talk about that and talk about why you see there's a need. So it's just honestly not talked about. Uh, to be completely honest, you know, when you're sitting at a dinner table, it's not things that your parents ever really wanted to talk about with you. But it's so imperative and so important for these people to start talking about it now, especially when they're younger. You know that's why we try to get a lot of this um, information out in the schools, in the high school. So maybe they go home and they say, Hey, mom, I learned about budgeting today. Can we talk about that? 
you know, we, we really want to change this generational um, knowledge gap that has happened because people didn't talk about it back in the day. Um, so we want to get them to start talking about it. One of the big things that I've been working with at WVU specifically, as you talked about, you know, we have these graduates that we're sending out into the world and they're going to go and get their first paycheck and they're going to show up on the first day of their job with a benefits package and they're going to say, okay, you have 48 hours to turn this back in and it's a 50 page document. So what do they do? They go home to mom and dad and maybe that's the first conversation that they've ever had about money or benefits or what that looks like. So we're doing a lot of uh, career planning, career readiness. Um, what's it look like when you get that first job sort of seminars? And, and you talk about it being generational. I also think it's changing behaviors. I mean, oh, top behaviors. Um, you said it perfectly. A lot of a lot of families don't talk about their budgets. It's a taboo subject. Right. So opening up that dialogue, opening up the conversation, it can be an uncomfortable conversation. How do you get past that hump? How do you make it a comfortable conversation? I think that getting students excited about it and wanting to talk about that is going to make their parents want to open up about it a little bit more. To be honest, I think that technology has helped us a little bit in that space. When you think about all of the apps on your phone, you you know, we have instant access to our bank accounts, to investing apps, to, you know, a, a whole gamut of financial, what we call fintech uh, um, apps. And if a student is excited about this and they say, hey, mom, can you help me with this? Then maybe that will open that dialogue. So I think that technology has helped us in that respect as well. There's also an embarrassment factor yeah, sometimes when sure. you're talking about finances. I think uh, parents don't want to admit to their children or to anyone First, what their finances Absolutely. are, right? We don't like to talk about that, but we also don't like to, to say we don't know. Right. It's hard to admit that you don't know something sure. when it comes to stuff that you should be dealing with. Absolutely. And so I think uh, dealing with that stigma is a big part of this. For sure. Um, how do you measure success when you're talking about personal finance as a whole. Uh, do you do some pre-testing and post-testing when it comes to this, and, and how does that work? We do. So um, before all of our seminars or workshops that we have, we usually have a pre-test and a post-test, especially with our large um, freshman class. You know, that's a really big data point that we could we could access, and we do it again with our teachers um, before they come to our Finance University event, which hopefully we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Um, but we do want to gauge their knowledge before they have whatever training we have, and then we want to gauge their knowledge after. Um, and it's been really beneficial and exciting to see that those test scores, well, you know, assessment scores, I guess is a better way to say it, usually come back much higher after they have uh, had the training session with us. Sure, there's some retention there. And you do work with other national organizations Absolutely. to um, really foster the, the, those relationships and keep this conversation going. Next Gen, great group of people. Absolutely. I've worked with them myself that, that does some great work in this space. And Foolproof is another organization you are currently working with to help bring resources here into the state of West Virginia. So talk about these partnerships. Yeah, so those are just two of the many. Um, and But they are two really fantastic ones. Next Gen, um, if you, um, you said you were familiar, but for those of our viewers who maybe not are familiar, not as familiar, they provide curriculum resources for teachers, whether they're a kindergarten teacher or a 12th grade teacher. And honestly, I even take some of their um, activities and use them in my college classroom because they're just really relevant. You know, they talk about budgeting and credit and investing. They have a lot of gamification that is in there. So these students are excited and they want to play these games. Uh, Foolproof talks about health, healthy skepticism. You know, how can we just not trust all of the advertising that we see and blindly go and buy something because an ad said that it's really great or someone else says that it's really great? You know, how do we learn to make those smart decisions for our Ourselves. They also provide curriculum resources for our teachers and, uh, you know, K through 12 teachers and post-secondary teachers throughout the state. Um, you know, we've used Everfi in the past and we have a lot of great corporate partners that I'm really excited about working with in the future that maybe next time if I get to be on the show again, I can express those partnerships with you as well. Absolutely. You yes. will get to be on the show again. And we're going to talk more with you in just a minute. I'm here talking with Professor Amy Pridemore at WVU's Center for Financial Literacy and Education. We have a lot more to talk about. But first, we are going to take a quick break when we return much more with Professor Pridemore. Stay with us. Hit a home run with Smart 529. Save for qualified higher education expenses. Use your savings at accredited colleges, universities, and trade schools around the world. Savings are a win with Smart 529, a program of the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office.
Welcome back to Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Today I'm here with Professor Amy Pridemore, Director of WVU's Center for Financial Literacy and Education. Amy, thank you so much for being here with us today. And we talked a lot earlier about the center and its mission, but one of your goals is to make sure teachers in our state are more comfortable teaching personal finance, and that's a big mission of yours as well. So let's talk a little bit about this. Finance University is one of the ways you do outreach to teachers all across the state of West Virginia. Tell us what that is and how that works. Sure. So Finance University was actually started in it back in 2000. 2002? Oh, 2002. This is our 20th anniversary. <laughs> so yeah, 2002, 20 years ago, um, by the state auditor's office. And, it, you know, it was a combination between them and WVU. And they decided that they were going to turn it over to us back in uh, 2015, I think, was the, the first year. Um, so basically, this event is, runs from Sunday to Thursday. We have teachers from all across the state. And like I mentioned before, even some teachers from Kentucky come over because they just love our, our resources. Um, and we provide the a really uh, wholesome curriculum, whether that is bringing in our partners like NextGen and Foolproof to provide them those curriculum resources to take back to their classrooms, um, whether that's providing train the trainer opportunities for them, because as you know, you're not going to teach investing in your class if you don't understand investing yourself, because then you're afraid that teacher, students are going to ask you questions and you're not going to be able to answer them. And it's just, you know, so you're just going to stay away from that subject if you don't feel comfortable teaching it. So we want to bring in professionals who are able to educate these teachers about these subjects so that they feel comfortable teaching them, and then they also have the resources to take them back so that they don't have to build curriculum from scratch as well. Um, while they're up here, we always have a really nice dinner for them. We usually take them to a Black Bears baseball game or a really fun activity, and we just treat them like the great professionals that they are. We are so thankful for all they do for our youth here in the state of West Virginia. We want to treat them really well while they're with us. Yes, absolutely. It's it's such a great event, and I know the Treasurer's Office has been a part of yeah. this <clears throat> many years in the past. This year's conference will be held July 24th through the 28th in Morgantown. These seminars, they help teachers in elementary, middle, high school. How do you think these uh, sessions make a difference for the teachers? So I think that it's really huge because as you know, personal finance isn't a requirement in West Virginia. Um, we would love for it to be. They just pushed it in Florida, so maybe West Virginia will follow suit uh, here soon. But a lot of these teachers do these things on their own merit because they feel like it's a really important thing and they want to take it back to their business classes or um, you know their career technical education classes that they're holding at their high schools. Um, but my favorite was that we actually have one teacher who's an elementary teacher, and she's a librarian. You know, So the, it's not in her purview to teach this at all, but but she's just really excited and wants to, to help her students understand as much as they can. Um, so we have teachers from all different backgrounds that come to Finance University, and because they feel it's important, I think that it it grows. You know, you get you gather a following um, whenever they show the importance and how much their students are learning. Then their others at their school and you know colleagues across the state are wanting to join in as well. And you partner with other organizations to help make this whole big effort a success Absolutely. because it, yes. it takes it takes a lot of planning it takes a lot of work yeah so the state treasurer's office is usually one of our um, presenters there we love when you come and talk about your get a life program our teachers really love that um, I know that you and I have tried to work in the past that hopefully we can get it up in the northern part of the state so that's a mission of mine um, we have different banks that come in we have different partners Gene Natale from Troutwood he's a big uh, leader in the financial literacy space he works at the University of Pittsburgh he's really fantastic and comes every year um, and we just have all of these individuals who have a wealth of knowledge um, that share all of their their information with these teachers. These teachers have to leave. They're excited about it. I'm Absolutely. Sure. And I actually, we did a weekend boot camp in Snowshoe just a few weekends ago. We won't talk about the weather. It was 18 degrees and snowed seven inches. <laughs> so we'll leave that behind us. But when sure. we look at the, when we look at the conference as a whole, it was a really great time. And actually, on the survey, some of the teachers said this was. I, I feel it was nice to have a mid spring boost to be fired up and want to go back in the classroom and teach this to my students. So that was really exciting to hear that as a as a feedback from and hopefully we have some teachers watching so if there's any teacher out there who wants to participate or wants to get involved 
or wants to just reach out and say, how can I get more information about the great resources you have, what, what do they need to do? Um, so they can do one of two things. They can either email me. It's just amy.pridemore at mail.wvu.edu. Or they can go to our website. The easiest way to get there is probably to go to the business.wvu.edu and type in Center for Financial Literacy in the search bar. There's a huge list on there that will talk all about Finance University. We're probably going to open registration in early May uh, for the the summer's conference, but it will be held at the Morgantown Marriott, like you said, July 24th through the 28th. So registration hasn't opened Has yet. Hasn't opened yet. So that's good to know. Yep. People can uh, be on the lookout yeah. for that information. Actually, in the next couple of weeks. I, yeah. It's already May, middle, or middle of April, so <laughs> yes. it'll be here soon. <laughs> yes, and uh, you know, April is Financial Literacy Month, so I just wanted to, to talk high level with you about financial literacy as a whole and just what are some of the, the topics that people should really know when it comes to their finances? Because I think everybody watching you know, can learn something from some of these tips and tricks and, and just the knowledge is out there. There's just so much of it. Sometimes it is, it's hard to know what's right and what's not. Absolutely. And you know, <clears throat> when you talk about financial literacy, sometimes people think that that's a big scary word. You know, what does that really mean? What does that look like? You know, maybe it might be subbed out for financial wellness or financial education, but really when you bring it all down, it's just talking about basic money management. You know, how do you budget? Are you bringing in more than what you're spending? Do you need to cut back your spending? How are some ways that maybe you could prepare yourself in case of a catastrophic loss or even just an emergency as you know we've got lots of potholes in the state you know what if you blow a flat flat tire you know do you have to use that credit card or can you do you have an emergency fund saved up that you're able to uh, put some of that you know use cash versus putting on a credit card how does your credit score impact your borrowing potential you know going out and getting a mortgage or going out and getting a car loan um, you know are my interest rates going to be higher or lower depending on that credit score so really we just want people to look at their holistic financial picture and be able to um, not be stuck if they have an emergency and uh, be able to plan for it a little bit better. That's a great point. I always bring up this um, as an example when I'm talking about financial literacy. It, early in my career when, when I was young and, and not making a lot of money at all, I was chasing the, you know, I was, I was chasing my credit card bills yeah. all of the time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't <clears> until <throat> I really st said, regardless of my debt, I'm going to start saving a little bit at a time yes. and building up a little bit of savings that I was able to, to start to see a bit of yeah. a turnaround because you're always going to be, there's always going to be an unexpected expense, oh, always, right? Always. And if you can't pay for it out of your current budget, you're looking somewhere else. Yeah. Talk about good credit, bad credit. Yeah. That's one of the things I think people need to know about. Absolutely. So one thing that I really like to tell my students in my classes is that there's one major thing that I want you to know when you leave here, that your credit, the higher your credit score is, the lower your interest rate will be. So the, they have an inverse relationship. Um, if you have a really great credit score, you pay off your bills on time, you have had a long credit history, you are not maximizing all of your credit cards out, uh, you have different types of loans, you know, you're not just all in credit cards. Cards. You have a mixture of a mortgage or auto loans, all of those things. Um, those are going to be what increases your credit score. But again, if you're not paying your bills on time, if you um, have maxed all of them out and you just are a really risky borrower, then banks aren't going to want to lend to you. Their, your risk is going to be higher, your interest rate is going to be more, and you're going to end up paying more for that item that you want to purchase, whether it be a car or a house or whatever, um, because you don't have a great borrowing history. So it's really important to make sure, number one, that you're paying those bills on time, um, and number two, just try to keep your credit as uh, you know, an average amount so um, that it's not, you're not maximizing all of your cards all the month. And then we, we talk a lot about making your money work for you. Absolutely. Um, but investing is a very scary term to many, many people. Many people. Yeah. <laughs> Me included. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I, I think a lot of, you know, we, we didn't talk about this specifically, but um, women, uh, I think, are growing in the uh, statistics as far as managing the household budget. Absolutely. I think that's a pretty high statistic. So, um, 
but both genders, I think investing can be a very scary term. Oh, for sure. And that's one thing that, again, I really want to impart on these teachers and on my students as well is like, what is the basic way? How do you, I, how do I even open a brokerage account? You know, like you, I was taught, you know, our generation was taught that investing was really only for the wealthy. And that's not the truth. It's not the truth at all anymore. Um, it's really easy to go online through Fidelity or Charles Schwab or E-Trade to open an account and just put maybe 10, 20, 30 dollars in there each paycheck you know and eventually that money is going to accrue and you can just put it into maybe like an EFT that will be traded with the market and it's just something really easy that you can almost set it and forget it per se um, but you're still making that money work for you versus you know having in a savings account where you're maybe only earning pennies on the dollar. <clears throat> Any more tips or tricks just really quickly to share with some of the viewers out there about um, best practices when it comes to budgeting or money management? Sure. I think my biggest ones, again, are just make sure that you have more money coming in than you have going out. You're not maxing out those credit cards. I know back in the day, I used to be a person who would pull out of my savings account to pay off my credit card. I didn't ever accrue the interest, but I wasn't ever saving anything. So um, like you said, it's that, that happy balance of saving a little bit, but still um, paying down your debt at the same time. And then just make sure you're paying all your bills on time to have a great credit score. And your interest rate, that's an important thing to look Absolutely, at as well. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, um, a lot of times people gloss over the fine Oh, rate. for sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, those credit cards can be anywhere from 18 to 20 percent, and that's a huge amount, you know, especially right. when on average the interest rates are anywhere from 3 to 4, 18 to 20 is very, very high, and a lot of people don't realize that on their credit cards. All right, Amy Pridemore, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Always a, a very informative discussion with you. Um, some great resources out there, and again, people can reach out directly to you or go to WVU, uh, the business school's website. Yep to learn more Absolutely. about all the great work yes. you're doing. Thank Thanks you so for, much, Gina. Thanks for joining us, and thank you for joining us as well. Again, you can learn more about the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office and all of the State Treasurer's Office programs by visiting wvtreasury.com. And you can stay up to date on the latest news and information from our office on social media as well. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. Thanks for joining us.